welcome back to all the things today we're gonna do um, a tour of my home grocery store my pantry my prepper pantry whatever you want to call it um, I think it's important to have uh, to build a grocery store in your home if you're able to do so because it just gives you one less thing to worry about if you did have like a job loss or an illness or something where you did not necessarily have the money to spend at the grocery store you would already have that food on hand and whatever money you had coming in you could focus elsewhere on other bills and things um and so for me i just think it's important it's been important for a long time and i just want to encourage you that if you know if you're watching this video you're probably curious about one too or maybe you've already started your own and so i'm just going to share with you what i have give you some ideas and um, i do have a video titled 10 prepper pantry tips if you are you know brand new at this and you're looking for just some tips and encouragement and you know all of our reasons are different for preparing whatever your reasons are 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 correct for you and your family and my reasons are correct for myself and my family i think um but i'll just show you what i have on hand and the way that i have been preparing some of the things that i do and hope that it will be an encouragement for you to build your own home grocery store okay so we'll start here in my kitchen um in my kitchen i am blessed to have these large cabinets on this wall and i'm able to stock them with just food i have cabinets on the opposite wall with other um you know dishes and pots and pans and things but this is the first um shelf over here and i'll try to reach high so that y'all can see it um i'm short y'all i'm only five one this top shelf is mostly canning stuff so i've got like my sure gel my pectin my um things like that and there's um those right there that little those are like seasoning packets for canning tomato sauce pickles things like that and then my next shelf, I keep a lot of Jello on hand. I think Jello is a great thing to have in your pantry for when somebody is sick. Um, and it's also great for flavoring things like cakes and stuff like that. And then we have pudding. There's a couple bags of cereal on this shelf that are open that we're eating right now. Um, and then we have some, just some things also that are open that we're using right now, like some oats and um, oatmeal and stuff like that. I have more in my pantry for longer term. And then that's just cat treats and dog treats. Then on this shelf, we have cake mixes and brownie mixes. Um, I keep a lot of cake mixes on hand. I can certainly make a cake from scratch. I do make cake from scratch on a regular basis, but a lot of times you can get cake mixes on sale, brownie mixes on sale, at least where we live for less than a dollar, sometimes as cheap as like 49 cents. So. I always stock those up and keep them on hand. They're great to have to, you know, make a quick dessert with. And then these are just bags of cookie mix. Same thing with those. When they're on sale, I stock them up. And I just have them in these so that they'll stand up on the shelf better. And then this is just some vanilla extract, some homemade vanilla extract that is still um, getting done, turning into extract. And some of these little ones are done, but the bigger jars like this in the back and all that's just vanilla extract and everything. And like, I have peanut butter in my pantry, but this one's open, we're using it now. A lot of times I'll keep whatever's open in the kitchen with me. Okay, for our next shelf, it's more baking stuff right here. I have a lot of um, sprinkles and icings and things like that. And I have a lot of extracts and stuff that I keep because I do do a lot of baking. Back there is some orange and lemon extract. Um, I made a video on that a long time ago and that extract is done and it's in my pantry. So this is a second batch of orange and lemon extract that is in there waiting to be done. And then I've got some croutons and stuff. We use croutons. Um, I have a casserole that uses croutons, so I keep a decent amount of those on hand. That is like a, a favorite in this family. There, there's a video on that too. And some pizza mixes, some um, yeast for making bread and stuff I've got on this shelf as well. And on my next shelf, I've got some breadcrumbs, some more baking stuff like chocolate chips, baker's chocolate, marshmallows, things like that. And I've also got some corn muffin mix. And then on the bottom shelf here, I have my baking powder, baking soda, flour, um, you know, just stuff like that, salt, pepper. Um, the, the liquor, we use that for making different extracts. So that's why it's in the baking cabinet. Um, and then I've got my, we like to make a lot of our own homemade ice cream. So there's a lot of ice cream salt. And then I've also got some canning salt 
and stuff like that on this shelf that we are. Um, this, I have more in storage, but I keep some in here, especially right now, it's about to be canning season, so I keep a good bit in here where it's readily, you know, available to me. And like, those are like brown sugar and powder sugar that's open and some beans that are open that we've been using now cooking it with. My next cabinet is mostly pasta. Up there on top is actually just a cotton candy maker and some citric acid, but um, here we have stovetop, pastas, pasta mixes, rice aroni, stuff like that. And then down here I have more pasta and uh, macaroni and cheese, all of that. Um, I do have pasta in long-term storage. I usually keep my pasta in here while we're going through it. And then if it gets to be close to the date or something, I can always, you know, put it into Mylar bags or something. But typically we don't get that close to the date before we use the pasta. Um, for instance, this one right here has a date of December 27th of 2024. So I have a year and a half, I have 18 months to eat this pasta um, and I promise y'all it will be gone and gone through. I know in my past videos, pasta was something that made people nervous because of bugs and things like that. And I totally, totally get it. I do. Um, but I, I have not had that problem. I'm very thankful I've not had that problem. And we try, try to keep a good eye on it, rotate through it, use the oldest first and store what I need to store when I need to store it. Underneath the pasta cabinet is my snacks. These are things that are, you know, I can throw in lunch boxes or we can have as a snack or whatever here. I've got popcorn, crackers, cookies. Um, these two baskets are full of things that are open that I can just toss in the lunch boxes, you know, stuff like that, little single serve stuff. And they're really looking a hot mess. I could have cleaned that up before I did this video. Probably should have cleaned that up before I did this video, but I didn't. And so there it is. There you see some real life snack mess and also some real life chip mess going on down here. So uh, we don't usually open this many bags of chips at a time. We'll open a bag or two and eat them, but I did have a good bit of company um, this past week and this weekend. And so several different types of bags were opened at different meals. So that's why there's so many open right now. Um, and then I just have some more, um, there's like some honey buns in there and some cookies and stuff like that. And then on the bottom shelf, these are freeze dried fruits that I purchased quite a while ago. Um, they are still in date. We have been trying to go through them, but I don't usually purchase those anymore now that I have a freeze dryer. Um, I just do my own. I've had the freeze dryer for a little over a year. And those are, those are all still in date, but they were purchased even before that. Um, and then there's some, there's just some crackers back there and stuff. And then I do have some icing over here. I usually like to make my own icing. Even if I use a store-bought cake, I think making your own icing just makes it so much better. But I also like to keep some icing on hand just in case. And that, <laughs> that has nothing to do with my food, but that's my uh, little KitchenAid, um, chopper I can't think of the name of it right this second but anyway I picked that up at a yard sale y'all brand new for like 15 bucks still in the box I was pretty proud of that all right so we will move well the last thing in my kitchen I'll show you two more so the only other food cabinets in my kitchen are these two by the stove and so up here I have I have um six of these boxes there's three of these on each shelf and they are full of like different this one is just taco and fajita packets. There's one up there that's just like um, meatloaf and gravy and stuff like that, seasonings. And I keep them in here so that they sit on the shelves better. And then down here I have stuff that I'm using right now. So like even if I have several of these in my pantry in there when we go in there in a minute, I keep the one I'm using in here close by the um, stove for, you know, more convenience. And then my other cabinet over here on the other side of my stove is just our seasonings. And we do have a lot of seasonings. Um, I, we like to season our food and so we do have a ton of seasonings I, I know we do and then there's just a couple more seasonings on the wall not many um also that I keep over here by the stove and that's the that just holds my camera when I'm filming now we've moved into my pantry room I'll show you everything in here um but this room was originally a carport and the prior homeowners we've been here for 25 years they converted it into an extra room on the home prior to us purchasing the property. 
and it is right off of the kitchen so it is convenient access to the kitchen and then um that door right there is actually my laundry room um in in there so let's go through these up here we have extra spices so extra yeah more spices y'all i know i know but like i said i like to bake and i like to cook and i like to season our food um and then this shelf i really like to keep a lot of these like um muffin mixes on hand and stuff they are great you can add um all they need is milk and you can make pancakes with them you can make um you know you can do them as muffins um, but I've seen people do waffles with them and all kind of stuff, and they're they're still fairly cheap. They're great to have on hand, so we love those. Then I have like drinks and things on this shelf, you know, Kool-Aid mixes, coffee, tea, um, stuff like that. And then on this shelf is that's just some extra flour. I have some flour in long-term storage, but I also like to keep flour out for easy access. This bottom thing that is um, cranberry juice that I canned myself. It's so good, y'all. And this is just some freeze-dried strawberries and some homemade pickles. And then I have some more freeze-dried stuff back here and some green beans that I just canned the other day. Those are freeze-dried like onion celery. And then in this thing here, there is apples, applesauce that I made and also some canned um, lemon juice and orange juice. And then that bottom shelf is just extra jars and trash bags. Up here we have our cereal. I used to keep a lot more cereal than this on hand, but I have noticed that we are just not eating as much cereal anymore. I do suggest cereal in your pantry if you have kids or if you eat a lot of cereal because you can get it really cheap, especially on sale. I don't like to pay more than a dollar forty or a dollar fifty max for a box or a bag of cereal. And you can easily do that with sales and coupons, at least in the area we live. And I don't know about everywhere, but you can for here. And um, they, they typically have a far off expiration date. So uh, that is a good thing to keep if, if your family eats it. Then on this shelf, we have like coconut milk, evaporated milk, condensed milk, um, lots of fruit. I keep lots of fruit on hand. Uh, not just to have fruit, like sometimes I'll open a can of this fruit for us to have with our breakfast or something, but recipes that have fruit in them, um, just a side of, sometimes we'll have like a side of peaches with dinner, something like that. And then over here, I've got all these pie fillings. Um, I wouldn't normally be like, let me stock up on pie fillings, but for us, for Ollie's, they keep these in there pretty well stocked at Ollie's for pretty cheap. Um, let's see, for instance... Okay, so $1.29 is the price for us at Ollie's for these, all of these um, pie fillings. And so that's pretty cheap to keep something on hand to be able to make an easy dessert, a cobbler, a pie, or whatever. And then pumpkin puree, I keep a lot of that anyway because of biscuits, dog food, and some cherries. Then on this shelf, we have all of our um, pasta sauce, things like that. And then over here is freeze-dried milk and buttermilk. With freeze-dried milk, it is it tastes exactly like regular milk. I'm so impressed with it, but all you do is it's volume for volume, so you would just fill this jar with water, and then you would have milk again. And then down here, we have our um, some convenience foods like Chef Boyardee, and then I've got some baked beans and mantra stuff. This is freeze-dried eggs, so these are raw, and we have a lot of chickens, y'all. We have... 27 chickens, a rooster, and 26 hens. So we got a lot of eggs right now. So we've been putting a lot of eggs through the freeze dryer. But anyway, all you do is two tablespoons of powder, two tablespoons of water, and that equals one raw egg. And then I can use it for baking, or I can make scrambled eggs or whatever, and you cannot taste a difference. This is tomato paste. I took my cans of tomato paste and put them through the freeze dryer. And now they take up so much less space on my shelf because they, they fit in just these couple of jars. Uh, but it was several, several cans. And then I have condiments down here like barbecue sauces, marinades. There's some lime juice, lemon juice, vinegars, honey, stuff like that, syrup. And then on the bottom shelf, these totes are full of, this one is sugar. And these things are in Mylar bags in here. I've got sugar. This one is um, cornmeal, brown sugar, powdered sugar. The powdered sugar and brown sugar are not in Mylar bags. They're just in there. The cornmeal is uh, with an oxygen absorber. Do not put an oxygen absorber in your sugar. It'll make it hard. 
this is flour and sugar, rice, and then some more flour. And then over here I have my like extra oil and stuff. And see, they're just in there in, you know, mylar bags for long term. All right, and then on this shelf, I guess we'll just start at the bottom here. We've got some dry beans um, and then some more sauces, condiments, things like that for cooking. Same thing up here, peanut butter and jelly, um, condiments, salsas, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, um, all of that kind of stuff on those shelves. Then above that, I have my pasta, my um, boxed potatoes. I'm not a huge fan of these, I'll be honest, but they're all right. I do make them with dinner every now and then, but you can get these where we live typically on sale for about 49 cents a box. And so I think that's a great thing to stock in your pantry. They usually have far off dates and um, I just think that's a good thing, cheap to have on hand. These are instant mashed potatoes. This is a whole thing of instant mashed potatoes and I just keep them in here so that they will stand up on the shelf or well, lay on the shelf like that. These Bear Creek soup mixes, all you have to do is add water. Great thing to have on hand. Up here, I have like um, Ziploc bags, tissues, stuff like that. And then down here, we have our rice mixes, pasta mixes. There's some dinner kits, like those tasty dinner kits back that way. And then, don't look, that's actually just like hurricane supplies and stuff like that. Or like, we don't get hurricanes here, but we get really bad weather. It's, you know, storm supplies, but those shouldn't be there. That's because my husband needs to take the drill and this little saw to the garage and he hasn't done it. He's just put them there. So again, there's some real life for you. I probably should have done that before I started this video, but I already started it now. So we're going to go with it. That's my freeze dryer. And over here is like paper towels, toilet paper, um, aluminum pans. Those are just takeaway containers extra paper plates, stuff like that. Those are my bags that I take to Sam's, like my cooler bags. And then up here we have some Clorox wipes and um, extra cups. But on this shelf on the opposite wall, up at the top, there is some ramen noodles, some, a couple of j larger jars of tomatoes I couldn't fit on the regular shelf, and then some egg cartons, because like I said, we've got a lot of chickens, so people give me their cartons and then I give them free eggs. Um, over here we have canned meat, another great thing to have in your pantry, in your, your prepper pantry, your home grocery store, whatever you want to call it. Um, these are, you know, I'm not, I'm not as likely to open this up and just be like, okay, well, this is our dinner tonight is this ham. I would probably cook a regular ham, but I would if I needed to, and I didn't really have the money to go to the store and buy meat. But these are actually pretty decent in like a breakfast casserole or something. So, you know, it's good until March of 26, but if I was getting close to that date, I could just make a breakfast casserole or something with it. And then I've got some tuna fish, canned chicken, stuff like that. A um, couple more convenience items, um, chili, chicken noodle soup, because you need to have chicken noodle soup on hand for sick people, you know, plus it tastes good sometimes when you just want some. Um, beef broth, chicken broth, cream of chicken. I have a lot of casseroles and dishes that take cream of chicken, so I stock a lot of that. I don't have a lot that take like a cream of potato or cream of celery. I have a few, um, so I just, I don't stock as many of those like I do the cream of chicken. And then I'm allergic to mushrooms, but my family, there are some things that I make for my family with mushrooms, so I just have a couple of those. Um, same thing with this. Okay, and then this is our um, like beans and vegetables and stuff like that. And I really like to keep a large variety of things because I don't wanna have to eat the same thing every night for dinner. And like I said, we are eating this food right now. We are not um, keeping this food for you know 20 years on this shelf. We are rotating through it and replacing what we use. And so I try to keep roughly a year on hand uh, to be able to feed us several meals. And so this shelf, you know, we've got tomatoes, potatoes, corn, green beans, collards, you know, sweet potatoes, carrots, peas, all, every, all these different types of beans. And we get to have a large variety of food 
uh, whether I can afford to go to the store or not. And then on the bottom shelf down there, that's just extra drinks and stuff. And that right there uh, is some jelly that I canned. That's some strawberry jalapeno jelly and some peach jelly that I canned. And then these two boxes are bottled water. Um, there's, we drink that now and that's not really for long term. It's mostly just for now. And if we had like a small reason to need water, we would have these bottled, these cases of bottled water. We also do have um, a shallow well in the backyard that is on a hand pump. And so I can use it anytime I want to. I don't need electricity to be able to pump fresh water from the ground. And we do have, it is drinkable just like it is out of the ground. But I do have filters and things as well that I can treat that water with um, if I needed to. And then I will show you our freezers. We have two chest freezers and a stand freezer and then an extra fridge and freezer. So um, this is our fruits and vegetables freezer. That is mostly what is in here. There is also some butter in this freezer, but for the bulk of it all the way down, um, let me see if I can show you. Can move some things around. Yeah, I'm not going to pull all that out. But basically all the way down is frozen vegetables, frozen fruits, um, and different varieties of those. And then over here is our meat freezer. So um, on our top shelf we have beef. So I have hamburger meat, steaks, cube steak, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then our second shelf is chicken, chicken breast, chicken wings, chicken thighs, um, you know, all of that, chicken tenders, whatever. Down here, we have um, bacon and sausage and um, pork, pork, there's pork loins, there's pork chops, uh, that's some of Biscuit's dog food. There's a turkey down here, because uh, there was a really good sale on them at Thanksgiving, and I probably need to pull that out and we need to eat that soon, but. And then, um, that, that's, this freezer is pretty much just meat. Then we have these two left, um, this chest freezer here. This is mostly just convenience food. Um, there is some, let's see, there's french fries. Um, those are some egg rolls that I made the other day. There's corn dogs, um, chicken strips, stuff like that. I mean, things pizza. Um, there's some ice cream and stuff in there, but this freezer is basically just mostly convenience foods. And then this last freezer is pretty much just breads. So there's tortilla shells, there's, um, there's biscuits, there's pie crust. There's a couple little things of like the refrigerated pasta that I put in the freezer. Um, stuff like that in there. And then we just have like these frozen juices. I really like to have those on hand for um, breakfast on the weekend or something to be able to make some juice. But that's, that's it. That's what we have in this freezer. And that's it. That is my tour of my pantry, my home grocery store, my prepper pantry, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's what we have here on hand. And we also have like a stock of laundry detergent and shampoo and body wash and deodorant and um you know household cleaner items all of those kind of things on hand medication stuff like that as well um that i i did not show within my grocery store um of of my pantry but we do keep those things as well and i encourage you to do the same it's important that we have what we need on hand when we need it and um, I just, if you like these videos, I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. I thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.